Hi, this is Matt at AppWorks, and this video will talk about what it takes to make a really useful dashboard with FileMaker Pro. Uh, a lot of times people think of a dashboard as like a main menu, and historically, a lot of FileMaker databases, a main menu is just a large collection of buttons. But a dashboard is a very different thing. A little Googling, and you'll find charts like this one that I found that talks about a bunch of the principles that you really need to make a solid dashboard. And some of these are really important. Considering your audience is a very big one, doubling margins and having lots more white space, having all the elements be interactive so you can directly go to related records, for example, choosing um, very graphical elements, but not overusing graphical elements. And maybe the one that's most important of all is prioritizing simplicity, keeping it really, really simple. There's some other great tips here too, like rounding your numbers. So rather than showing, you know, lots of detail and in individual amounts, just uh, rounding off your numbers to the nearest ten or hundred or thousand even, um, and and having some tabs. So like have some some things that are useful. But basically, the biggest one that I would say is you need to have it be actionable. There should be data that's actionable and shows you either real time or very near real time data from your database. How do we do that? Let's dive in. So let's say that we want to take a few things on here, um, such as recent invoices, recently viewed records, some kind of a search system, and something graphical that shows other data, like for example, follow-ups that I've been doing recently. So right now on my dashboard, I just have my basic, this is just a FileMaker template file, and um, I just have a couple of tabs on my tab widget, and I'm going to put all my information there. So my first one I'll call recent invoices. And what that is going to do, I've put a few things over on the side here that we can grab. Um, so this portal has invoices on it, which we'll take a look at how that works in a second. And on the graph, it shows me data from the, the uh, table occurrence called dashboard invoices. And so I have a TO for the dashboard, which is just a globals table. And then the one for invoices um, uses a equijoin uh, for a Boolean one field to a new field that I have um, that's called is unpaid, which shows me all the invoices that are unpaid. And then I can further filter that or do other things. So let's give that some space and see what we get here. Maybe 12 lines will fit. A little bit more than probably would. So this would show me these invoices. Now notice here I'm not actually rounding them off. Um, so if they're detailed, um, it'll actually show that. But um, this is a really simple thing and it's pretty fast. I actually have quite a number of uh, fake unpaid invoices in my sample data. But it's a really easy thing you can do, and then you can set this up so if you click on it, it would take you into that particular invoice, and then you could see exactly what it is. So that's one of the key things, is the action uh, to be able to go directly to the data so that customers don't have to use the search or change layouts or click a navigation button. They can just directly see, hey, this invoice was from a long time ago, it isn't paid, what's going on? And then they can go right to the information where they could contact the customer. Okay, the second thing that I think is really important is some sort of a search. I think you're going to really love this one um, because it's the most dead simple search script I think I've ever written. So this would be, if you wanted to say, uh, go do a search for something like ABC, what it would do is just quickly go and find that data and you're going to love this script. Uh, so let's actually kind of go into it with script debugger. The easiest way to get to a script is to run script debugger and then try to do a search. Uh, so I'll do ABC again. And then when it comes up, it'll show you the actual code of your script. And then to edit it, you can click the pencil tool, which brings up the script in another window. Then what I usually do is halt the script that's running and close the debugger. So that's a couple steps, but it's very, very quick. And it's much easier, I think, than going into the script workspace and trying to navigate and find the script. Now, like I said, this is one of the shortest scripts ever for searching. Um, it exits if, you, if the user didn't type anything. So if they start typing something and delete it, it doesn't do anything. Um, because this one runs on an object save trigger. So, and that will trigger if you start editing something and then delete it. The second thing it does is go to the layout to do the search. And then it just does a perform quick find with the global data. I'm also choosing to not clear that global field so that after I run my search for ABC tech maybe, it actually then still shows me exactly what I searched on. Because this script here will run the same thing. So I could run ABC or Tech Portland. One of the cool things about using QuickFind is it actually searches for multiple types of data. 
So if I said like um, uh, tech and 9-17-2020, it's going to actually do a search on both things combined. It'll search multiple types of data in one string, and that's a pretty cool feature. Uh, and there's a little bonus tip for you about how Quick Find works. Let's say that I want to add some other stuff on my dashboard. Let's go to a graphical thing. And this is FileMaker 19.2 that we're in right now. So I'm going to show one of the new um, features that we have there, which is an add-on. So I'll call this one um, like timeline. And that's one of the add-ons that we have. I'll delete this. And then over here, I have a web viewer, which has my timeline on it. I'll make that nice and large. And this timeline is just a sample version of it. But what's cool about this is it's very graphical. And this could this could show you like, um, <clears throat> like you could have a customer dropdown selector, or it could just show all the follow-ups that have happened in date order from today. And you can just kind of quickly go through and look at that data. So that's a, that's a really good graphical thing you can do. This one can also be made really small. So you, what you might do with this one is actually make it small and put it off on the side. Uh, and then on your uh, other widget, you could make it narrower so that the two things could be on there side by side. Yeah, that actually works pretty well. And then you could depend, you know, figure out how you wanted to change your metrics as you resize the layout. So the last thing that I want to show is, uh, and I'm going to discuss some of these options of other things you can do, is I want to show uh, one of the tools that you can get free from AppWorks called FM Recent Records. And so over here, I've got this portal that I've already done, and we'll explore that here in a second as well in terms of how it works. So what FM Recent Records does is as I navigate around, oh, I need to change that uh, label on that thing. As I navigate around and use my database, it sort of lays a breadcrumb and then tracks all the records that I have seen recently, and then with one click, I can go back to the record. I don't think I've actually wired up that one click, so maybe we'll get to do that live in this video. Um, but the way that it works is it uses a, um, a table occurrence that automatically comes in when you install recent records. Um, it just uses one table in your database. And that table stores uh, the breadcrumb data. So as you view a record, it will track it. Oh, I remember I was going to change the name of that tab. And then I just tracked it myself, as I will do. So recent records works very much like, um, like a web history feature would work in a browser. Uh, except I think a web history is not that useful, but this I think is very, very useful. So if I click on this, it will show me all the records that I've seen recently. Some of them were seven days ago. So if I, for example, click on an invoice and I go and navigate to the client and then I maybe view uh, a couple of more client records and then went back home, I would see those records as having been viewed just now. So it's tracking my company, my customer table. And then to get back on it, I would just, just click on that record and get to it. Let's actually wire that up right now. So first of all, I, another principle of a dashboard is I don't think that data should be able to be edited. It should, it should be a link to where you want to edit things, but it shouldn't directly allow editing. And so I'm going to click on these fields and go over to my data tab here and uncheck the box for browse mode. And then my favorite method for making a button is to use a button bar. I pretty much only ever use the multi-segment button bar these days. And then I delete the two segments, so I just get one. And then it's just going to navigate. It's just going to do a go to related record to RR recent record. We'll look at that graph in a second. So GTRR. And then, oh, you know what? As I think about it, there's actually a script that comes along for the ride with a recent record, and we're going to run that script instead. So, PS, because recent records is, de is designed to work in several different uh, contexts. So there's a label, uh, one just called go to recent record, and that works automatically from a menu. Um, <clears throat> that actually automatically, this whole button comes automatically installed when you download and configure this program. So then I'm going to make that button invisible. So I use the invisible button bar and <clears throat> then it should work. So now if I clicked on ABC technology, here I am at the ABC technology record. So that's really simple. So in just a few minutes, we've created a graphical dashboard with links to related invoices, recent records, built a search feature and added a graphical widget. Pretty cool. 
Okay, I promised I was gonna look at the graph for recent records. Let's take a look at that. And then I wanna talk also about one other add-on that you could do that would greatly uh, empower your database more, and that's search results. <clears throat> so on the graph for recent records, there's just this one table occurrence, which looks at that table uh, for the recent record data. So um, the dashboard is very simple, right? So this actually the one for dashboard company I'm not even using. That was when I had started, or maybe it's a default one that came with it. But what I am using is the, um, these two here, which have portals. And the one for the add-on doesn't actually require uh, a portal because that uses a web viewer on my, uh, on my dashboard. So pretty simple stuff. So I had talked about extending this further. What can you do from here? What other things can you build? Obviously, if you use a lot of things on the internet, you've seen tons of different dashboard ideas on many different websites that you use, QuickBooks Online, Amazon, um, so many major sites like that have, have dashboards. A lot of those are stores, so Amazon, not really quite the same thing. But QuickBooks really is quite a dashboard, and there's, there's um, some principles that they use it that I think are, are pretty good. And there are a lot of the same ones, lots of white space, navigation, uh, quick links to get to where you're trying to go. Um, so FM search results would basically be a widget that would replace this. And it, rather than just searching one table like this one does, it would search everywhere. So it would search in uh, your customer data by name, by phone number, by email address, by company name. It also would search invoices by say invoice number or by dollar amount or by date. It has some features that if you type a date in incorrectly, it can sort of fix that and figure out what you're trying to get if it doesn't find the record from the date that you type in. So that's one of the ways you can extend it and it's a great thing to put on the main menu on your dashboard in your database. Um, and we have other videos about search results. So that and recent records are both free tools you can get from app.works. Thanks very much for your time and I hope you find these videos useful.